Hello, hello, how do you do, everyone, and welcome to your NARSA weekly update for the week commencing Monday, the 8th of August, 2022. It's Gary here again, and, well, here we go now. We're really, really in the thick of the roller coaster that is Rangers Football Club right now, aren't we? And, and we're only two weeks in to the 2022-23 season. Man alive, what are we like? Just... Getting right into the emotional quagmire of being a fan of the world's most successful club. I'll talk a wee bit more about the games in the, gigs, in the, the game segment in, in a wee minute or two. But for now, I have to say that, quite honestly, regardless of what the results are, the community and camaraderie that we generate worldwide, especially when a game is on, is just absolutely fantastic. I, lo I love it. I just absolutely, literally love it. You know, we might not get time to spend together, you know, in, in general terms during regular non-game life, but as soon as the team is announced, just everyone from everywhere all bands together to discuss, debate and celebrate the privilege that was bestowed upon us when we became the chosen ones of our wonderful club. I often think about what life would be like if I just had zero interest in Rangers or football or even sport in general and it just doesn't bear thinking about, quite honestly. My, my friend circle, my community circle here in Canada, it was the same even back home. My family bond that is created and maintained by our collective love for the club is just second to none. And that even runs into the periphery of people that I meet. The amount of people I've met, I've been in Canada for almost 18 years now, and the amount of people that I've met over those 18 years that I maybe meet and I, I, maybe sometimes I don't even remember who they are. And they're like, oh, I still don't wear green. I still don't wear green. And things like that. You know, it's just, it permeates through every single part of, of my life. So through the highs and lows, we will always be the people. And for I, for one, will never, ever forget or take that for granted. I just wanted to start the show this week with a wee bit of an overview of just quite how much I love the club. And uh, on to the game segment. For this week, we had two what I think I described as last week as crucial games for the club. And our fortunes were, of course, very, very different in both of those games, unfortunately. The first one was our UEFA Champions League third round qualification match away in Belgium against USG. And oh my word, what did we say about that performance in the 2 0? Defeat, not a whole hell of a lot, we can say. That's really what... Uh, I thought we started the game relatively well enough, just kind of like shadow boxing a wee bit, kind of poking and prodding just to see if there was going to be any openings or anything like that. And they were just content to sit back and absorb and, and basically figure us out. Then around the, I don't know what it was, the 20th or 25th minute or so, you could just feel the tide turning a wee bit and they were getting more and more and more into um, into the play and you know more and more joy in their attacking more and more possession and then the most calamitous of goals you know, that we're likely to lose at any point hopefully this doesn't become a habit where we have James Sands with some sort of brain diarrhea I don't know if that's an actual thing but it felt like a thing when I was watching it to just not put the ball anywhere out of danger the ball breaks back to into Borna territory and he does his best statue impression. He's actually getting very, very good at that. We've seen it a few times now to basically just do nothing and stand there and then it breaks to the USG player inside the box who has time to control it, time to go and change his shirt, time to have a milkshake and time to blow dry his hair before setting himself up for a shot that even though it was deflected, should have been should have been blocked by McLaughlin. Yeah, and then it's one nil. What an absolute disgusting disaster of a goal that turned out to be everything that could go wrong did go wrong and unfortunately for us it was only going to get worse and worse as the game went on ironically however the second goal came by way of a of a completely wholly incorrect decision by the ref which included var checks by the actual video assistant refs in the in the studio wherever they were situation uh, situated and then they tell the on-field ref you should go and take a look and that typically doesn't bode well. You know, they're kind of like, mm, you maybe want to go and confirm this decision. Not always. And then he inexplicably and incorrectly, did I mention it was incorrect, awarded a penalty kick in what was proven to be afterwards actually the wrong decision based on the International Football Association Board's interpre interpretation of what would constitute a penalty award involving the ball 
touching the arm or hand. I, and that's a fact, like it's on, the, it's on the website, the rules are the rules and he didn't apply the rules properly. And last season, I very rightly so praised the referees in our, our UEFA Europa League run as most, actually maybe all the referees were, were just incredible, like sensational in terms of their governance and management of the games and their interpretation and, and application of the rules. But this fellow Irfan Peljdo from Bosnia had an absolute disaster of a moment right there when he had more than enough time to, to make the right d decision. You know, they, they dispatch the penalty and that cements their one foot in the door um, of advancing to the next and final round of qualification for the Champions League group stages. Now, there's two key things at play here for me. One, we were absolutely awful for, for most of the match. Just just dreadful, just dreadful um, from, from the team management. And of course, it happens a day after I'm praising Gio, just saying he gets it and his management and his substitution and his reading of the game and all that. I'll maybe save that praise for the end of the season from now on. But right down to every single player on the pitch, we, we deserve to be beat. And truly, it could have been more had it not been for John McLaughlin you know, saving himself a little bit and making up for that error on the first goal with some crucial saves later in the game. But number two is that despite us getting what we deserved, or, or maybe even more than we deserved in terms of the scoreline, the call for the penalty on their second goal was just an absolute disgrace. And I, for one, can't help but feeling a real sense of injustice at that. And that's that's kind of exacerbated itself more and more as the aftermath and the, and the devastation of the, the game performance kind of subsided and, and then started to really just look at the facts. So this is potentially a very, very, very expensive decision that the referee made. And to, to brush it off with a, well, we were well beat and it wasn't really material to the overall performance and result, just doesn't wash with me, not even close, to, to be very honest. So I hope for more um, proper officiating in the game tomorrow, especially, I mean, we're, we're really just looking for the referees to know the rules and then apply the rules, aren't we? I mean, that's really it. And he obviously didn't know the rules and then didn't apply them because he's looking and looking and looking and looking. And yes, Golson's got his arm up. And yes, it does kind of strike the underside of his forearm or whatever it was that it hit. But that's not the rule because he has to look at the play leading up to that. And anyway, know the rules, apply the rules, and then we won't bloody complain about it afterward. Positives from the game. Tillman was probably the only player who put in a shift and grafted like we need from a Rangers player. And, and the other positive is, as I've kind of alluded to here, the fact that it was only 2-0 was a bit of a relief because we were just getting ripped apart eh, right, left and centre, literally right, left and centre um, through through the majority of the game. Negatives, our entire display. The, the formation was odd. The, the players just never got going. We were torn apart for the majority of the game. We had four players booked, including three defenders, which was probably going to be material. And, and we didn't have one single shot on goal. Not one. I don't think USG are a brilliant team. So what does that say about us? About us? About us? I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I really, really don't. The referee watch, that clown Irfan Peljto, I'm butchering his name just like he butchered that decision, had an absolute disaster for the penalty and, and the decisive second goal. And as I mentioned, we, we do ask a lot of the referees and that's one of the reasons that why I put a referee watch section in, in these updates to try and be able to be as objective as I can after the fact. But as I've mentioned, one basic thing is we want them to understand the rules and apply them. And this guy clearly did not do that. So very, very poor officiating form from him on that one. So for that, he gets a two out of 10. And by the way, you get a one out of 10 by coming onto the pitch with your uniform on. So that's how bad he was. Our second game was Saturday's home opener against newly promoted Kamarnock and that was a walk down memory lane, I have to say, in watching a Rangers team facing a Derek McInnes team. I truly, honestly feel for the fans of every team that that fella has, has managed because it's the same rough and tumble, utter garbage he puts out every single time and it's nowhere near to being classed as entertaining football. And we were literally just looking to bounce back from Tuesday's disaster against USG and we did that with a comfortable 2-0 win thanks to his first competitive goal 
from Antonio Cholak and a second from the returning Alfredo Morelos. Both strikers getting on the score sheet is a great thing for them and for, for us, I reckon, and that'll stand them in good stead in the long term. We didn't look in any danger at all and, and completely dominated the match. I think we had something like 73% of the possession and, and limited Kelly to zero shots on target, like USG did to us, I guess. And and this will shock you, Kelly had six different players booked during the game too. Just hammer-throwing thugs all the time from that clown's teams it's just so difficult to watch it really is anyway positives two league games in two wins scored four and only conceded one we were very very patient for for most of the game and, and we absolutely got what we deserved in keeping a clean sheet and getting the three points and as i mentioned having both strikers score for us is definitely a boost for them and, and hopefully that's that's um, the floodgates open for Cholak and it's a good boost for Alfie to get a goal on his return since being out from I think it was about March time or something like that. Negatives, while it is kind of very early in the season and we have a, a lot of new players to bed and I hate to admit that we're just we're not very good to watch right now it's not it's not very entertaining it's not it's not like last season when we had fast free-flowing pressing foot entertaining pressing football and we had a an ability to readily break teams down just by playing and passing through them we we struggled to break down Kelly's defense um, a wee bit in our play out from the goalie philosophy nearly had us come unstuck on at least one occasion likely more I know that I almost had a cardiac arrest at one point um, I think it was in the second half when McLaughlin just decided let's see what happens if we pass it to a Kelly player so I'm just hoping I mean it is obviously bedding in of the of the new players six or seven new players introduced to the team getting used to the formation getting their fitness up and, and that kind of thing but it's just not super fun to watch for right now Referee watch for this game. Now, I need you to sit down for a second before I say this one because here's something you're not going to hear very often from me. Kevin Clancy had a solid performance in this game. He kept the, great, the game flowing when he could and as I mentioned earlier, booked six of their players to zero of ours. He wasn't involved in any great controversies at all that I can recall and, and overall he, he did a good job and because of that and the the fact that this makes me feel weird even just saying it out loud, he gets an 8.5 out of 10. I'm fairly confident this is not going to happen again, folks, so let's just leave it at that and move on. Two games this week, starting with tomorrow's crucial crucial uh, Champions League third round qualifier at home, of course, this time, to USG, and that's a 2.45pm Eastern Standard Time kickoff, 7.45 in the UK. And interestingly, they lost their third league game of their campaign 3 0 on away to Mechelen, Mechelen, Mechelen on Saturday. So who's to say that this tie isn't completely done and dusted yet? I felt it was immediately after the game and for the couple of days afterwards, but now I'm just at the point where I'm thinking you just never know. I do know they feel they feel they did a week a weekend team. I think someone, uh, I think uh, my mate Davy said today that they had uh, made seven changes from the first team, but it just gives me a little bit of a nervous butterfly in my stomach knowing that this just might be a thing, folks. Three 0 is all we need. Actually, just to win by three clear goals is is all we need, and and you never know, we might have it in us. And there's been some stuff banding around on social media and in the press and things like that that, that Rangers have never came back from a, a 2-0 first leg deficit. So all the signs, like literally every single sign, is pointing to us playing Europa League football again this year, which admittedly, of course, is not what we want. But based on last week's showing, is pretty much where we should be, I reckon. Now, of course, the beauty of being a sports fan is that we can dare to dream. So you never know. I mentioned last week that I was just a wee bit confused about how I felt about this tie and I'm still kind of the same. But did they have the game of their lives which coincided with our worst performance over 90 minutes since since probably Sharkhead in, in early February? I don't know. I'm really, really hoping so. Are they prepared for the raucous atmosphere that Ibrox is going to serve up tomorrow night and, and going to put down their throats? 
I doubt it. I don't know how anyone can truly prepare for that. Are we in trouble based on what happened last week? Yeah, 100% we are. But let's not forget that less than three months ago, we were in a major European final. So we should go out there with some swagger, some confidence, and just slam this mob from the very beginning to show them who we truly are. The fans will play their part. The team has to play their part so that the fans can really get going on that. And as I say, let's just dare to dream, folks. And, and hopefully we're still in the the Champions League by the next time I speak to you folks. The second game is another home one, this time to St. Johnson, who stayed in the SPFL Premiership by the skin of their teeth last year via a playoff victory after a very dodgy season last season, and completely dodgy based on the season before when they won two of the domestic cups. Uh, this one is Saturday, the 13th of August, with uh, another 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Kickoff 3 p.m. UK. So, like last week, another solid victory, including a clean sheet, would do very nicely in that one. Thank you very much. But we'll turn our attention to that after tomorrow's game, of course. For RTV, we're still in good shape in terms of any reported issues and our overall distribution of club and individual vouchers. And the service is working well, and, and we now have a, a very, very quick turnaround time on on-demand showings, which is less than an hour from, from full time. So all in all, this is a, a tremendous position, a, a very, very healthy position to be in for us. We communicated last week to all member clubs of what the payment structure will be for each club this season, and I trust that these arrangements that we've made are more than satisfactory for every club. I have to admit, I thought we'd have got a wee bit more positive feedback on that one, but it was kind of quiet, probably stunned silence. Is that maybe what it was? And people not believing what we managed to do. Not a massive deal either way, to be honest, but uh, all in all, our RTV portfolio is in tremendous shape and huge thanks. Kudos for that goes to Alan McWatt uh, for all of his help and diligence on that one. And just a reminder, if there are any individual member vouchers required, please do let Alan uh, and I know, and we'll we'll take care of that and get them organised. They're, they're slowly but surely trickling in now, which is which is kind of good. Um, and is there a wee addition on the RTV front for this week? And in the spirit of the club just announces stuff with absolutely no dialogue to key partners or anyone these days, <laughs> RTV announced a new show called The Preview Show, which will be available to RTV subscribers every Friday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. UK. The article on the website said, hosted by Emma Dodds with special guests, exclusive features and interviews every week, Rangers TV subscribers will be able to get ready for every weekend's games. So I think this is a great ad to help us get some topical human-led content on, on the Rangers um, TV platform to kind of connect the dots in terms of the games and, and what's happening at all club levels or almost all club levels and, and uh, levels and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing where this goes but it would have been nice to have been asked for an opinion on this as long-term Rangers TV institutional Rangers TV supporters of the product but we just that, that's just not what the club seems to be doing these days which is very, very interesting, to, to say the least. Anyway, I'll put uh, a link to the article and, and you can take a peek and, and remember that you are a very critical part of this, that your Rangers TV club and individual vouchers for the season are for games only, for live games and on-demand games, so no other content. So if you'd like to access this content of the preview show and other interviews and the like, you'll have to take up subscription. And there are details on the article that I'll post on how to do just that as well. For shout-outs, uh, not, not a whole lot uh, going on for shout-outs this week, but first and foremost, I'd like to send uh, huge congratulations to Rangers captain, fantastic James Tavernier, for playing his 350th game for the club this past Saturday's game against some, say it's some, some Marnock, Kilmarnock. <laughs> yeah, it's an incredible amount of games to play for any club and, and more so for our great club. And he just, the guy just keeps getting better and better, doesn't he? And, and he's really growing into the, the, the captain's armband more and more with each passing week. We need a vintage performance from him tomorrow to set the scene for us progressing to the next round. And the great thing about that is that we know he has it in him as well. Uh, secondly, on the shout-outs, uh, Rangers announced just today that the club has reached a new record number of MyJers members 
topping 46,000. 46,000, as I talked to you about that this evening, have signed up across the globe to support the club and put their monies directly into the ongoing operations of the club, which is which is just fantastic. Sporting director Ross Wilson says in the article, this is an outstanding milestone for my jails to meet and once again highlights the incredible loyalty of our supporters. On behalf of Geo, the players and our wider staff, I thank all my jails members for their continued support. We have made significant investment to improve our whole football infrastructure at the club and we will continue to do so. 46, so sold out season tickets a couple of weeks ago, now topping 46,000 members in there. That's just, I think that's just fantastic, yeah, to be very honest. Finally, on the shout outs for this week, and here's something that I've never done on this or any other pod that I've been on, but I'd like to say a bit of a congratulations to me. Yeah, yeah, me. So you've heard that, uh, you've, well, you've heard that correctly, first and foremost, but you, you, you may have heard for the regular listeners, me talking and or mentioning once or twice in the past that I've been doing some homework or, or doing some classwork or anything like that, studying, uh, because I was pursuing a qualification. That I can't remember exactly what it was I said before, but it was something like that. And I am absolutely pleased as punch to let you know that I am now formally a fully certified professional coach. CPC is the designation through the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching, which is called IPEC for short. Yeah, that's me. I'm a coach now. Now, I don't want this to be getting confused with me coaching football or any form of sports or anything like that, for that matter. I'll leave that to the people who actually know what they're doing. But no, I'm now a kind of life leadership and you know, uh, type type of coach right now, and it all started probably just about maybe just under a year ago or so, something like that. And I was contemplating my career to date. And my my kind of trade now is a, I'm a project manager, and I and I I'm an instructor at a local university as well in project management stuff. And and I was thinking about the things that I like and I don't like about my job, and the things that I'm good at, and the things that I'm not good at about my job. And and what I really like most is helping people, getting them unstuck and able to move forward and, and, you know, with a more clear path and a renewed sense of, of awareness and purpose and stuff like that. So then I talked to my love Erin about that and she almost jumped out of her seat in excitement and started doing the initial research about what the best courses out there were. So I settled on IPEC and I used the, what they did here in Canada was there was like a $20,000 small business award issued by the government here during COVID just to help small businesses keep afloat basically and very fortunately I didn't have to tap into that so I used that as my tuition fees it was a wee bit more than that but I used the bulk of that for the tuition fees and then I started in November 2021 and embarked on Roughly about 200 hours of hands-on education and, and experiential learning. And then got the word last Tuesday, actually, three minutes into the USG game, believe it or not, <laughs> that I had passed my, my final exam. Uh, so this is just a start for me as I um, build into it and see where it goes and where it takes me. But um, I, I will never, ever talk about this again on this this uh, podcast, I promise. But I just thought I would... I would just let everyone know what I've been up to and I'm very, very pleased to get it done. My target was to get it done by late July, mid-August time frame and managed to do that, which is kind of incredible with everything else that was going on in and around my life this year. So there you go. Convention update for this week. For NASA 2023, I can officially confirm that it's 311 days until Toronto Midtown go nuts in Toronto. And in weeks terms, that's just over 44 weeks to go. I was hoping to have a kickoff meeting with the hotel points of contacts that I'd mentioned last week, but we didn't manage to make that happen. So hopefully we'll get that one on deck for this week and continue to keep things moving on that front. I did mention last week I owed Rosie Ratta from our official travel partner, the Holiday and Flight Centre, a response and I can confirm she did get the response that she needed last week. And we do continue to dialogue on a almost daily basis uh, these days, which is as good as we gear up to get our formal travel packages announced. And on that note, we are still uh, targeting, sorry, to to get the travel packages together and on sale this month sometime, a wee bit later this month, most likely now. But we are still somewhat on, on track on that. And as I mentioned last week also, we do have a follow-up meeting with the... 
the fellas from Toronto Midtown Rangers Supporters Club a week tomorrow, uh, where we'll get into a wee bit more detail on their planning efforts today, so I can give you a wee bit more of an update on that after that conversation has taken place. On to our communications for this past week. Uh, firstly, Brian Campbell and I did meet with Rangers SLO Greg Marshall last Friday to discuss in more depth and detail what the recently announced fan engagement update would mean for NARSA and and overseas fans in general. It was more of an introductory chat as to where things sit right now and how we can move forward in, in unison. And, and we did put some suggested areas where I think that we should and could have more engagement with the club as we move forward. And I'll just give you a bit of a rundown of what those were. The first one was Rangers TV, just new ways of working with Rangers TV as we constantly evolve and, and move forward. The second one was on retail. I believe that NARSA should have more involvement and a, and a wee bit of a stake in the game. And with, with Rangers in terms of how we get Rangers merchandise to North American fans, how we can have a voice at the club for, for North American fans and, and maybe overseas in general, just to kind of have a singular voice on what the experiences are and, and what the experiences should be. Uh, match day ticket applications uh, process, we have that right now. It's very manual right now. And as, as the ticket office uh, continues to modify and modernise their their processes it would be good to be at the forefront of that with them for for our membership too a liaison opportunities for prospective or ongoing sponsorship or marketing arrangements that the club has and and then also events working with the club to to help expand official events over here in in north america and the last one was was on the communication front and and as i know i've mentioned multiple times before i think the communications folks are are leaving way too much on the table, so to speak, by just blurting out communications in a, a seemingly kind of sporadic, isolated way. Uh, you know, this and the and the RTV announcement I mentioned earlier being um, the most recent examples. And when I say this, I mean the fact that we found out just as an article on the website that there was such a thing as a fan engagement update last week. So, yeah, we, we, we could do a lot better. I think in, in that area and, and I'd like to help the club get a bit more creative and a bit more engaging in this space as well. So RTV, retail, match day tickets, marketing and sponsorship, events and communications, that's a chunk of work. We are offering up our help for free to help the club expand the brand overseas. I hope they take us up on it, but as always, we'll just see where it goes. It was a positive start. And I will keep everyone updated on progress, if there actually is any progress to report on <laughs> as we move forward. So, remember I said I'd have an update on the memorabilia for the Rangers 72 film. Well, I'm delighted to tell you that I do have an update this week. The update is that I will update you next week. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I have been mentioning for a number of weeks now that I did have a conversation with a fellow who was involved in the entire production of the movie and with the most recent conversation centering around exclusive merchandise uh, offer for NASA members and NASA friends as well. So what I can tell you is that we have an exclusive offer of, of, frame, of a framed piece of history basically and what's included in the, the, the kind of frame thing is a 1972 Cup Winners' Cup final pennant signed by at least two members of the 72 team, the Rangers 72 film poster, and then your own personalised message and frame number. So, for example, frame number 10 um, of 500 presented to Gary Gillen, August 2022, something like that. The the frame details, it's a solid oak contemporary frame. It's, it's 36 millimeters wide of course i'm reading this out right now and the frame is finished and sanded by hand to a fine finish the artwork and pennant are set to a black mount with white beveled 3d box frame and the frame supplied is supplied ready to hang with a picture cord as well i've got some imagery of that i've had it for quite some time now and, and i have to say these are absolutely beautiful really 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 nice now they are a wee bit on the pricey side but with that goes the knowledge that you're receiving history and also supporting the club right now. They're retailing at £500, 500 pounds, five hundred Great British pounds. But if NASA members and friends order enough, we'll get a, a pretty sizable discount on that as well. They did ask us to try and place a bulk order, which in theory sounds convenient, but it's really only truly convenient for the seller and certainly not convenient for us here at NARSA because then we'd be on the hook to get them distributed around the continent once we receive them. So anyway, this week what we're going to do is we're going to canvas our membership and try to gauge numbers uh, for these things 
I have to say, looking at it, I think these would look absolutely incredible in a supporters club, you know, behind the bar or somewhere in the corner, wherever you have your, your stuff. And of course, it would look amazing wherever you have your Rangers memorabilia at home as well. So whatever works best, we'll get on a wee bit of an engagement campaign of our own this week and and then see where we take it from there. But uh, once you see the photographs, I guarantee you will not be disappointed by that. Ranger, Rangers also announced... Uh, a partnership with Match Worn Shirt and the article says Rangers are today delighted to announce an innovative multi-year partnership with Match Worn Shirt. Match Worn Shirt will offer supporters the chance to officially own a shirt worn by a first team player from every game played this season with women's and B team shirts from selected fixtures also set to be available. This is a unique opportunity to own a jersey of your favourite players and from what everyone hopes will be another memorable season for the club. Every shirt comes with a certificate of authenticity while they are professionally disinfected with U, with UVC technology to, pre to preserve both the signature of the player and the match-worn elements that make such an item so special. So I'll put a link in the blurb for tonight's pod and if that's your thing, have at it. You know, buy... My very, very rough math mathematics, say we play 50 games for the men's team, and what is it for the, for the women's and B teams, forgive me if I get this wrong, say 30, I know it says it's only select games, so let's let's just say 30 anyway for now, with a squad of 18 for each game, that's roughly about 2,000 shirts per season that could potentially get auctioned, and, and by the way, that is the process, it's an auction. Um, that, that you'll, you'll enter, you don't just get to go in and say, oh, that's £500, I'll buy that for £500. So I did take a, a quick peek at the site, and, and the process is that the auction opens, and, and I believe is open for four days. You Before all that, you create your account, you go in, you make your bids, and if yours is the highest by the end of the auction, then boom, you're the winner. I can't see them putting every single match-worn shirt by every single player on there, and they can't allude to that in the article anyway, but I reckon... There's going to be a few in there that will be real collector's items as we move forward into some massive games domestically and, and in Europe as well. So these guys obviously know what they're doing and, and this is another uh, revenue generator for the club and is better than, quite frankly, better than kids running on the pitch and begging for shirts from the players too. So as I say, I'll pop the, the link into the blurb, take a peek and if you're interested, uh, have at it. Uh, I mentioned a wee while back that we had a new club in Northern California called the NorCal Blue Noses Rangers Supporters Club. Well, they've gone and changed their name after a few weeks of operation and are now wanting to be known as the NorCal True Blues Rangers Supporters Club. So not Blue Noses, True Blues. So there you go. We are still working uh, with Stuart and all the guys over there to get the club established on our website and that will hopefully be done in the next couple of weeks once we get their artwork sorted and figure out a wee bit more about a venue as well. One last thing on the comms front for this week. Our, the NARSA website contains club specific information for each active NARSA club. So this includes the name and location of your venue if you have a venue and contact details for your club committee should people want to reach out and get in touch with you for whatever reason. It's very, very much fueled and driven by the clubs and there is a constitutional responsibility to let us know of any material changes to your committee or to your venue or to your, your updated details, email or whatever it is so that we can update our own communications channels including the website. So this is just a wee reminder for each club to do just that to enable our comms to be as current as they possibly can be and in the spirit of that i know that the las vegas loyal uh, just changed their address and i'm not 100 percent sure if that was changed for the second time or maybe we haven't changed it yet or whatever but now they are going to be operating out of eagles lodge at 1601 east washington avenue in las vegas not 100 percent sure where that is in relation to the strip or not but if it's anything like the old place it'll be a bit of a party there as well i am very sure okay in part four of the folks who support encourage tolerate and create space for and sometimes work on nasa related things with your nasa executive members i am delighted this week to tell you that our rtv and broadcast director alan mcwatt finally 
provided me the information I needed to keep this segment going for one more week at least. Uh, so a wee bit of background on my working experience with Alan. And I won't tell you what he said to me on text after he listened to the pod last week, because uh, this is a family show. But a wee bit of background. Uh, so Alan initially joined us back in 2018 as the Southwest director. And I recall my first conversation with him on the phone, because uh, Brian Campbell gave me his, his number and said, look, this guy is in Orange County Rangers Supporters Club. He's a mate of mine and is interested in being involved have a chat with him and, and see where it goes from there. So Alan and I connected. Uh, he was, I, I recall him being like in an airport or something something connected with travel. He was either coming back or going there or something like that. And little did I know at the time that this would be the basis of our relationship from then literally to now. The guy is always travelling somewhere for work or holiday or both or something like that. You know, so when I talk to him most times, I have to ask him, where he is and what time zone he's on as well and whether it's for work or pleasure so that I know how inebriated or not he's going to be. Um, and latterly, <laughs> Alan has been in the role of the RTV and broadcast, broadcast director since since its inauguration last year. And, and he has been instrumental in continuing to build our, our relationship with RTV, as I mentioned in the RTV segment a wee while ago as well. So here's what Alan said. My main support in my nurse life is my family. Our family is very close and are bonded by many things and none more so than our love of Rangers. I've been married to Pauline 27 years. We married in Thailand two days after Gaza signed. Now, here, this is not what Alan said. This is my part now. If my research is correct, and it could be very well incorrect, but if my research is correct, Paul Gascoigne signed for Rangers on the 10th of July. 1995, which would mean then that Alan and Pauline's wedding anniversary is the 12th of July. So if that's true, and I didn't confirm that with Alan before, talk about perfect timing to make sure that you're never ever going to forget your anniversary. Oh, that's, a, that's a brilliant, I love that. I absolutely love that. So anyway, um, back to what he was saying. Uh, my son Aaron is 25 years old and was supposed to be born when Gaza scored a 40-yard free kick against Aberdeen, but was eventually born the day after Rangers beat Motherwell 5-0 some eight days later. Aaron currently lives in Philadelphia and is a member of the Philly Club who have helped him settle in to the city. So thanks again to the boys and girls over there. Our beautiful daughter Mia is 20 years old and was born when Rangers were away to Dundee and I had to give up hospitality tickets. <laughs> it's brilliant that he's equating the, the, the marriage and the births with something around Rangers as well. That's just absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so anyway, so he says, I had to give up hospitality tickets, albeit at Dundee. And Mia comes down to the Orange County Rangers Supporters Club and loves being able to get stuck into the donuts while making out, pretending that she's watching the games. Now, this is me talking again here. Here's a wee thing about Mia. Her name, and the way that I read it, it's M-I-A. Her name is spelled Maya. But boy, oh boy, hell, like, hell hath no fury than a Maya scorned if you happen to say than a Mia scorned if you happen to say Maya, like I just did there. Oh my God, I hope she doesn't listen to this one this week. I did it once, just once in Vegas at this year's convention and I got shouted at and firmly <laughs> put in my place. No joke. So I'm going to try and never, ever, ever do that again. And I tell you folks, like see on my notes here for this week, I have... M -E, I have it, have it phonetically spelt so that I don't make a mistake and I still made an arse of it there, oh my word. So if you need a reminder on her name, and this was coaching, guidance and advice that Maya uh, gave me, Mia gave me, is think Mama Mia, the ABBA song. Mama Mia, 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 Mia. It's Mia. Do not forget the name Mia. I'm going to say it 500 times tonight to make sure that I do not forget it ever again from this point forward. So my apologies. 
Mia. So the family moved to the USA to, uh, in January 2006 and we have been part of the NARSA, part of the NASA family since being in Orange County through Brian Campbell. Our first convention was Redondo Beach in 2015 and I really enjoy driving the changes in NASA to be more modern and supporting the conventions over the past few years. During NARSA meetings, Pauline continues to bring coffees. I don't know if it's coffee that I see you drinking most of the time, Alan, to be dead honest, but let's just go with what you said brings coffees and her speciality of spaghetti bolognese during the calls. And I tell you what, folks, this is actually bloody true. I typically wait, not always, but I typically wait until after the calls before I eat, when I can. And and then I look at the screen and this guy, he's, oh, talk about a sloppy eater. He just has bolognese sauce all over his camera. It's all over his face. It's down his shirt. And obviously he's a bit of a slivering mess, but when you're hungry, it does look kind of delicious. So much so that I'm going to reach out to Pauline directly to see if she would be interested in us creating a, a NARSA food and beverage director for her, that she could organise food and beverages for all the NARSA executive members during our meetings. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? That would be great. So, in all seriousness, to Pauline, Aaron and Mia, thank you very much from me and the entire NASA family for supporting Alan and everything that he does for our association. Having had the pleasure of spending time in their company, I can say hand on heart, they're, they're such a lovely, lovely family. So yeah, again, folks, this is what the section is all about. It's just a wee opportunity to give everyone a sneak peek into who's behind the folks that, that make this whole machine work. We have three executive members to go. And again, I'm not going to call them out, but it's Fraser Muir, Billy Ferguson and Alec Grant. And all three guys, to be very fair to them, have been very consistent in completely ignoring every single correspondence I send about this very topic. So we'll see what next week brings and if I can guilt any of those guys to get on here and get us through that. That's going to do it for this week, my friends. You have a longer one uh, this week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and please do share it with whomever you think might enjoy it. Until next week, here's to something extraordinarily amazing happening for us tomorrow evening and another solid domestic victory in the league on Saturday. Please take care, folks. All the very best. Cheerio.